Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Black Tub Bootlegs. Today's review, Turley Gang, Fighters for Freedom. This is one of my favorite bootlegs of the Ninja Turtles, which was only released in Germany and the Netherlands. It has a great backstory about the characters being thrown into the Earth's hot core. They end up surviving, coming back to the Earth's surface, but unfortunately bring bad guys back to the surface with them, and thus begins their never-ending battle against evil. This is a hugely diverse line. It uses almost every single mold made by Sungold, and dives into a few other lines to steal parts. The accessories are really cool for them as well, so prepare yourselves for Turley Gang, Fighters for Freedom. In the early 80s, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were coming up with random ideas and ended up developing what would later become one of the most easily recognizable pop culture icons of the last three decades, really. It ended up having its own toy line, cartoon series. It's no wonder why Sungold wanted to join in the fun, making really fun characters and obviously making money at the same time. The result was really one of their most diverse products. They even went so far as to make a turtle copter, and it's also rumored that they made green versions of the Galaxy Fighter vehicles. Taking a look at our first figure, we have Primus. Of course, you can see the regular Galaxy Warrior body, um, but it's been molded in a bright green. You also have bright yellow, bright pink accents, which really are very cool 90s color choices. Um, the head sculpt is obviously very crude, but kind of cool looking at the same time. A little bit like a Simpsons character, but also a Ninja Turtle. For some reason, he has a weird comb over. I'm not really sure why he has hair at all, but for some reason, I enjoy looking at this thing. Really weird, quirky design. Moving on, we have the iguana version of Primus. For some reason, they ended up changing the heads from turtles to iguanas, probably some kind of legal pressure. I actually really like the iguana version of Primus. His eyes look like he's very scared. You can also see on his head the plastic is very thin, which makes me think that it was potentially the second run, just lower quality all around with the accessories and head plastic. Taking a look at Secundos, this is obviously the turtle variation of the figure again, inspired by Michelangelo, nice orange coloration. He has red wrist guards, belt, and boots. The face mask is a little different with two eye holes instead of the single visor. The wide gritted teeth inspired by a cursory knowledge of Ninja Turtle artwork. Secundos also seems to be the most common turtle figure. It obviously makes sense that they would have produced more of the figures that look like Michelangelo than other figures in the series. The secondary figures in this line are actually very hard to find. Taking a look at the Iguana version of Segundos, you can see he has the straight bracers and boots. He's also depicted on the card as having sun armor, a sword, and horn shield. The accessories for this series are actually very nice, sometimes molded in a soft rubber, other times not so nice with lots of flash and hard plastic. Based on the carded example of the Iguana figure that I have, it seems like the worse armor came with the Iguana figures, and the nicer rubber came with the earlier Turtle release of the toys. Moving right along, we have Spikes molded in a greenish yellow with baby blue accents. Spikes is also depicted with a Troll Force katana, which I didn't find an example of. He has the hobnail bracers and V-cut boots, which are the most common ones that I've found. They are consistent, so if you have the hobnail bracer, you usually have the V-cut boot. If you have the straight line bracer, you usually have the straight cuff boot. The Anubi face sculpt hasn't really changed all that much. The paint job is also very similar to what you'll find in the Galaxy Warriors line. Moving on to Sato, we obviously have a very elaborate variation on Baltard. The head has been molded in black, the body in gray. The accessories for this were actually taken from a Troll Force figure and a Sun Gold Wrestlers line. I really don't think the figure shipped with these accessories, but it's kind of cool to show you what was on the card. He probably just shipped with basic black armor and accessories. I was initially not really struck by this figure until I got him put together with all the accessories. I think he looks really cool. Uh, just feels right at home in the 80s and 90s. Moving on to Aquarius, you can see this is just a Lord of Insects figure. I've depicted him here with a G.I. Joe Scorpion. He probably shipped with the Lord of Insects accessory, I really don't know. This toy would have also come with a forehead decal, which is a little strange because it would conflict with the painted head detail. The paint job for this is a little different. You can see the crown on the side of his head is actually painted. The arm plastic is also a little mintier than the original Lord of Insects figure, and you have a mustard color sprayed from underneath to highlight the muscles on the torso. Moving on to our first bad guy, we have Snaker. This is obviously identical to the Galaxy Warrior Sahak figure, but he's been molded in a slightly brighter green, also airbrushed with green up the front and back of his torso. There's also a yellowish green version of this figure that does exist. This green version is much more common. The green and orange go really well together. Overall, a very cool variation on the Sahak figure from Galaxy Warriors.
And moving on, we have Disguster, who's based on the Ig character from the Galaxy Warriors line. He shipped with a large trident, or potentially this rapier, I'm really not sure. It's really hard to tell from the photo which accessory is actually there. Molded in a bright blue, green, and orange, really cool colors to put together. Overall, much more interesting than the original Ig figure, in my opinion. The blue plastic for this figure is very soft, very hard to find this guy in good condition. There's also a paint variation for the teeth, which I'll show you later. Moving on to Orc and Spider, you can see I've just depicted him here with a simple glow-in-the-dark spider. He's also depicted with a small dagger on the card. Um, I've just paired him with normal accessories here. You can see there's a little overspray on his right arm, which seems to be the case in almost all the figures. The paint here is a little bit darker black than the original Lord of Insects figure, and the plastic in the Lord of Insects line is a little redder. He would have had a large decal in the center of his helmet, which makes a lot more sense than the Aquarius figure where it's actually conflicting with a painted detail on the head. Moving on, we have Dragenius, who is obviously based on the Dragoon figure from Galaxy Warriors. I've depicted him here with Troll Force nunchucks. It seems highly unlikely he would have shipped with just nunchucks. The head sculpt seems to be a little bit different. Um, some areas have been kind of smoothed out, the head's a little larger, and the horns seem to be oriented a little differently. Um, the only real way to identify this figure from the original Dragoon figure is that the trunks are actually a bright red plastic, and the sun gold marking is on his shoulder blade instead of his legs. And then finally we have Tidious, which is a straight Baltard lift. You can see he has the straight bracers and straight boot cuffs that I was talking about earlier. The only real difference between this and a normal Baltard is the coloration of the hair, which seems to be like a blackish burgundy color instead of the normal brighter purple color. You can see I've had to flip the armor upside down here so that the text is legible. For whatever reason, they oriented the armor upside down in this series. I think just to have the spikes on the armor over the shoulders instead of underneath the arm. This line has a lot of inconsistent coloration. It does have consistent relationships between bracers and boots, or at least that's what I thought until I found a character with a V-cut boot with a straight boot. There's also paint variation on the faces material quality differences, some more flexible than others. The articulation for this toy is straight Galaxy Warrior Fair. The construction is all the same with riveted legs. The only real flaw with this line is the hip articulation, which really doesn't work. For whatever reason, the parts are slightly offset and they lock together, make it impossible to rotate the hips on most figures. I would say nine out of 10 don't work. Taking a look at min on card examples, you can see the turtle head version in the lower left. There's more character variation on the card. The second release seems to depict only iguana characters, which makes it seem like they were covering up what they had released before. And you can see the large bubble on the right hand side seems like it could accommodate any of the accessories that are depicted on the card. Looking at the Lord of Insects figures versus their Turley Gang counterparts, you can see the coloration is slightly different. The Turley Gang figures did ship with stickers on their foreheads, which obviously easily fell off. And here's a closer look at the insect accessories, which they may or may not have actually shipped in with the Turley Gang line. The Min on Card Lord of Insects figure is actually really cool looking. You can see the characters are paired with their own glow-in-the-dark accessory. I'm not going to get too in-depth here because I'll actually be doing another video related to Lord of Insects and Sectars later on. Taking a look at the figure articulation, obviously the upper torso is identical to the original Sun Gold figure, the only real change here being the joint at the knees. The Turley Gang figures have metal rivets in their knees, the Lord of Insects figures usually have plastic rivets. Very handy for helping stand the figure up. Taking a look at the known accessories in this series, we have two axes, two swords, an air tank, two types of armor, and a shield. Obviously the accessories with stickers would have had good and bad guy versions. Taking a look at the potentially unreleased accessories, we have a wrestling belt, vest, insects, a rapier, a katana, some kind of dagger, batlet, nunchucks, and of course the insects. Another interesting thing to know is that the chest armor is also used as the foundation for the air tank accessory, and also the shields have different variation stickers as well. You have the turtle head and iguana head stickers. I really think that's it for the amount of variety in this series. There's so many small variations and things that make this toy line really fun to collect. Lots of interesting characters, weird sculpts, lots of bright colors, cool backstory, what's not to like. That's it for Turley Gang Fighters for Freedom. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned for more Black Tub Bootlegs.